I have all heard people saying that libraries need to shout more about what they do and um, and they're not wrong when they're saying that but I'm, we also all know that it's not that straightforward. I think sometimes there's a lack of skill, a lack of resource um, and often bureaucracy all get in the way of really good marketing of the library. So it's great to hear about challenges overcome to create really brilliant marketing campaigns and activities. Um, in, with, in this webinar today, we've got three case studies from colleagues who've done just that. And I'm going to be handing over now to Edward Cutler from Libraries Connected, who's going to be doing the introductions. Uh, thank you very much, Sarah. Um, so uh, our, our first speaker today uh, is, um, is, is Sorel Clements, um, and Sorel, uh, as probably uh, many of you will know, is um, development manager for um, uh, Coventry Libraries uh, and Information Services. Um, Sorel is going to be uh, speaking um, uh, about um, uh, about the One Million Reads uh, project um, for uh, Coventry uh, City of Culture, in um, uh, which was um, which took place um, well, uh, which 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 took place in in um, last um, well last year and and, and this year. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, is I'm just going to um, is I'm just going to share my uh, I'm just going to share my um screen so that you can so because we've got some uh we've got some slides uh for you um ooh. so uh without further uh ado yeah here we go um i will hand over now to uh um uh to to Sorel. Hello everybody, thank you very much for, for being here today, it's lovely to talk to you all. I'm no expert at all in marketing, I'm just a librarian, but I wanted to share with you um, what we did to market a particular project, which was called One Million Reads, and it was an Arts Council funded project for City of Culture 2021-22. Um, so I think one of the things that, that was, you know, we had to really get over was how to, oh, sorry, Ed, can you go back, please? <laughs> Not ready for that one yet. <laughs> what we had to get over was how to mark, oh, I'm back again, hop back to. Um, we had to get over how to market things during COVID, which was really, really interesting. Um, and, and had an impact on everything we do. But I think all of us have, have suffered through that. So, so I won't dwell on that too long. Initially, we developed the One Million Reads um, idea with our library staff. It really came from their thoughts and what they wanted to do to celebrate City of Culture. And I suppose from a marketing angle, although it took time to get everybody involved in everyone's ideas, it, what it means is that you're already marketing to 120 people. What was really important to us was to develop a really, really clear and simple message. So it took, a, it took us a little while, but to get to that tag phrase, one million reads. I think if you're marketing things, it's so important to have a message that everyone can understand. It basically does what it what it says in the message. It doesn't need any explanation, any further explanation. So uh, we were very, um, when we chose that, we knew that at the time our issue figures were about 750,000. Um, so to get to the million wasn't too far a stretch. And again, what I would say in marketing is the way people react to words so the word million is a far bigger, stronger marketing word than 750,000. And right from the very start, because as, as people get involved in the project and start talking, you know, people start to use acronyms and shorten things. And I was so strong about that and said, no, it's always going to be one million reads written like like I wrote it on the on the previous slide no shortening no acronyms that other people don't understand which again is a really important marketing tool for me so 
this project and and the again thinking about marketing and thinking about the audience it was um important because it, everyone could recognize it as the greater good it was for the greater good of the city one million reads and again when you're marketing i think it's really important to, to think about that so city of culture rolled into town none of us had ever had any experience um at all what surprised me was the absolute fight i had on my hands to prove and to sell libraries to people that were employed by the city of culture organization so never ever assume that people are going to be on your side or that they're going to understand where libraries are in 2020 well in this case 2021 but 2022 um through showcasing to them everything that we wanted to do and everything we could do i started to develop uh like a little elevator pitch that i think that's again if you're marketing a product it's really important to have a little elevator pitch that you can use and, and pull out of the bag whenever you need it so all the way through when as more and more people were involved with city of culture more and more they employed more and more staff there was constant challenge against what we wanted to do because everyone that was employed brought in their own ideas from from all over the place but you have to stick to that initial vision that you have i think it's really really important to have a clear vision and stick to it and know what you want to achieve when um all the time it was kind of what's going to be the positive for libraries in this and then particularly the positive long term for libraries so arts council england make sure when you're putting in for funding that you allow enough money for marketing in its widest stretch of things and and that goes into any bids or any funding that that you're applying for next screen please ed so as the project started to develop and what what again we found really interesting we needed whether you're in a, a city or a unitary or a, a county we needed to work with lots and lots of different parts of the council you know from audit um insurance health and safety all sorts of different parts of the council and again that's where that elevator pitch that we developed for the project and what we were trying to say and what we were trying to sell came in really handy because if you think about all those people they all in the main live or work or have an invested interest in, in your authority so it was constantly as they were helping to solve issues and problems constantly talking to them about the project because they then become your advocates and they be they share the message for you and i just would say you just take every opportunity you can so <laughs> an example um kind of one once a year our chief executive and leader of the council do a let's talk session so there's normally about 150 200 people that attend the councillors elected members and and lots of staff to hear what's going on and they always have questions at the end and i always i'm literally they know they were laughing the last one i went to they said come on then sorrel they know what i'm gonna say i didn't have a question but with this i kind of wrapped it around into kind of um a question around one million reads and what did they think about it and had they heard about it and were we marketing it correctly so it wasn't necessarily a question about what what they wanted but it's a, a different way of advocating what you're trying to do and strangely enough straight away on the chat lots of people started responding to what i was saying and asking for more details so it's that internal block of people that you can get to quite easily next slide please ed um whenever you're marketing anything it's really important to keep that kind of keep on your toes and be agile and flexible so what a delight in the middle of covid when our libraries were just opening but you had to have an appointment to visit you have to use the one-way system yeah wearing masks um no events no activities no gathering 
and we were told we had a VIP person coming to visit us and we had to show the library as it normally would have been pre-COVID. So it was quite a stressful um, moment, but if you work really hard, you can find a way through things because it paid absolute dividends. Um, so this is a picture of, uh, which is now our Queen Concert, isn't she, Camilla, uh, when she came. And the whole Point City of Culture wanted her to launch the One Million Reads project. In the middle of the night, when I put Agile and Flexible, I suddenly thought, oh no, because if you can see the picture, we had these, they're just pull up banners really, we had them done as totalizers kind of thing, so that the libraries would keep um, a track of how we were doing with the one million reads and in the middle of the night I thought oh no well we can't have photos taken of as she was then Duchess of Cornwall groveling on the floor to put the first like thing on so that's the only banner that is the other way around if you if you can see it it starts with the first read and then goes downwards but all the others were the other way around so you have to kind of keep very agile and, and think think through everything um on that day just when everything was finished and and it was kind of oh thank goodness let's have a cup of tea there was then a tv crew shoving a microphone in my face and saying oh we'd just like to interview you now and boy oh boy was I grateful for that elevator as I call it an elevator pitch you know that quick summary that I could pull out to, to talk about the project talk about what we were trying to do because I by then said it so many times it, it was familiar with me so again everybody else just vanished when the tv crew said who who's going to talk about it so you, again you have to put your big girl pants on and just go for it and be ready and 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 promote the library service whenever you can. Um, next slide, please, Ed. So again, we had one overarching theme for the project. I hope, I hope what you see on the screen is is fairly straightforward. You know, I mean that was the last the last one when we'd got to the over the million, but obviously they 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 were we were hoping it really was clear and, and really said what we were trying to achieve. What we used uh, was a, a whole, we, again, different people respond to different marketing at different times, different ages, different cultures, all sorts of things. So we had that as our overarching banner, but then realized we need to do things differently. For example, if we were talking to schools or if we were talking to places of work and places of employment. Um, so we kept the banner the same, but slightly altered the message that we were delivering. The kind of gadgets and gizmos we use to engage people, you know, if you go into some supermarkets, they have those little uh, round tokens and you can vote for, for things. I don't know if any of you have ever seen those. We created our own little ones of those so that people could come in and put their votes in to say that they've read things. We had book bingo cards. We had those little cof coffee shop type cards that people could collect. We did all sorts of things. Uh, used whatever freebie giveaways we'd got to entice people um, in different ways as well and and put collections we were we were lucky that we we got enough stock that it didn't really matter if we sent some stock out to a factory and it and it went missing uh, we knew that, that that we were ready to risk that to make the marketing successful we use social media, Footslog, and lots and lots of our, our key partners. And again, also internally, if there was a mailing list going out to foster carers, this was on it. If there was one going out to school, this was on it. If there was one going out to industry, this was on it. It was just something that we, we really worked very hard to make sure the messaging was in lots of different places. Just before I move on, the other thing, and maybe this is a Coventry thing. So was we had to do a bit of work on our staff culture. So staff kind of were like, how do we know that they've read? 
how do we know if they're telling us they've if they're putting five things in the county thing how do we know so we had to do a bit of a bit it was a kind of very library thing and we said well you just gotta roll with it and if someone comes in and says they've run, read 20 books and they come in the next day and said they've read 20 books that's fine just roll with it you know it it, it wasn't that kind of thing that we were, we were auditing next slide this is the last one so these are some images that i thought you'd like to see of some of the various projects that came in under one million reads um so there's a small bells ring we had a canal boat um that was funded to come we commissioned a story bench so that bench has got lots of images associated people in coventry gave us their stories that they they want them wanted to see on the bench so george and the dragon lady godiva there's a picture of Shakespeare Birthplace Trust who we worked with and we worked with a company called Verbal to do some bibliotherapy reading with with groups of children. So what is really important, I feel, to finish off the marketing is to go back. I would deliberately went back to everybody to try and feed back on the success. So if you imagine that person in health and safety that would have got crazed phone calls from me about oh the Duchess of Cornwall's coming I don't know what to do you know and all the people that had helped along the way I went back I told them about the success of the project told them about what we'd achieved because that then gets their buy-in for the next time you're doing a big marketing push and it's a different way of at the end of it proving what libraries can achieve thank you Um, thank you very much, um, Sarah. That was that was um, that was terrific. We're, we're going to move on um, uh, very uh, uh, swiftly now to um, uh, Jill Barr. Um, uh, Jill uh, is the resources team leader for Nottingham City Libraries, and um, she was also the uh, she was on the um, she was part of the uh, second network of our um, marketing the library pro project. Um, very briefly, uh, marketing the library was conceived. Uh, in the wake of the pandemic because uh, well as you, as you all know libraries had to move uh, lots of their operations um online and and while this was very successful it also um it also raised um uh raised raised um raised awareness of 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 uh possibly a, a lack of internal knowledge uh about um about marketing techniques both um both digital and and physical and and um and so the project uh, was funded by um, Arts Council uh, England, and Jill was part of the second network, um, which uh, whose marketing campaign took uh, took place in uh, this this spring. Um, now Jill is going to take us through um, the uh, both the um, positives from that, that that Nottingham City found from the project and the challenges that none of us necessarily thought um had conceived of uh, in the uh, in 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 the first place but uh, she, she's going to talk about that so um i'll hand over to jill thank you edward um so hi everyone um as edward said um, my presentation is about the recent libraries connected marketing the libraries project um i don't have any slides i thought i'd talk very much talk you through the journey that we um that we went through as part of this project and our reflections so um, Marketing the Libraries project was separated into two um, marketing campaigns. There was a first network one that they went um, a, a good couple of months before us, and that was made up of the London Libraries Network, representing roughly 32 London boroughs in the city of London. And they focused their campaign on adults aged between 30 and 50. Um, Network 2 was the campaign that um, Nottingham City Council uh, was part of and um, we very much were part of the whole project group learning from Network 1 but also had our own separate themes and our own um, focus areas. So Network 2 was made up, made up of six library authorities, North Yorkshire, Oldham, Gloucestershire, Peterborough, Northumberland and ourselves, Nottingham City Council Libraries. So we're all widely um, and geographically spread across the UK, which was quite interesting. It was brilliant to get together with new authorities that um, we may not have um, engaged so directly with before. 
um, and our Network 2 campaign focused on young people aged between 13 and 19. Um, and that was a group that each library authority as part of the expression of interest to get involved in this project um, had said that had identified as being a hard to reach audience um, in terms of um, library membership and also um, physical attendance in the libraries. So the project journey, I'll talk you through the project journey. So we very much worked together as a group um, and our first approach was to look at our marketing campaign and to, to really identify across the group what we felt our uh, best message would be to say to young people about our library offer um, and really what they'd, they'd be interested in. So through these discussions, we actually found out at this stage that across the different authorities and as well within our own individual library estates that the library environments do differ from library to library and also our, our offer differs as well um, not significantly but there may be more space in some libraries for young people to sit and you know access more material and sit and study than there are with others so actually really we found it hard to identify a single key message um, that would represent and reflect our libraries. So, um, and then more kind of fundamentally and crucially, we thought we knew about what young people would or wouldn't like, what they know or don't know about libraries. And actually we, we realized it was very much a guess from our own perspective. Um, and we realized that we, we really didn't know what they knew about libraries. We didn't know whether they knew about them and weren't interested in what we had to offer or whether they just didn't really know about libraries, they were a bit off their radar and actually to bring ourselves back on the radar. Um, and then added to that is how do we reach these people? So um, they're not coming into the libraries, how, how we know they're digitally engaged, how, how do we reach them? So this took us really into the next part, part of the project where rather we had a, a pot of money invested through Libraries Connected and funded by the um, Arts Council. And um, we decided because we didn't really have enough confidence that we knew the audience, what the audience would want to hear and how best to reach them, neither, but a gap in either could really make the marketing campaign flop. So we invested um, some of the project funding into doing market research. So Creative Concern, who were, who are a professional sorry, marketing um, organization and, and company. They worked with Libraries Connected, supporting the, being the um, expertise to very much guide us through this, um, this marketing campaign journey. So they carried out a, a two focus groups um, with young people. So there are two different groups, one group aged between 13 and 15 and the other group 15, 16, sorry, to 19 and they asked for feedback on their perceptions of libraries, if they visited libraries, what they felt, what they liked or disliked, maybe any barriers they felt. Um, and then they explored the wider interest this age, you know, young people have, and actually what communication channels they used. Um, they also tested creative concern, also tested out specific marketing, um, example marketing campaigns that they'd put together. Um, and I think there were six in total and the both focus groups came up with two that was pre were presented back to us um, as a network two to see, we could have chosen any, but it seems silly not to go with the, the, the top two voted feedback. Um, there wasn't any point going through the journey, even though I think some of us kind of went, oh, that looks nice as well. But we, the choice was the, the feedback came back as myth busting. So bust these myths that the young people have and also promote what they want through their channels. And actually from the, um, some of the key findings from the focus group was that young people are interested in reading in our libraries. They are interested in books and comics and novels and they want, you know, they, that promotion works for them. So that was a really real positive. Um, so we decided to plunge into the unknown and go with that option. Um, there were fours and against for both choices. And I think some of the myth busting um, concepts could actually be turned around and used in a bit of a negative way sometimes. And then actually from discussions in the group, we kind of realized that there were slightly different rules across each library authority and within each library that some people may be asked to be quiet in a certain area if it's a maybe a set aside study area so we couldn't say oh don't be quiet in libraries you know come and come and be uh, come and be yourselves but um 
so we went with the the um, down the path of creating videos, um, promoting uh, comics, graphic novels, fantasy um, books, and other um, books and content that young people were interested in. And we decided to market through TikTok, which none of us have used before. So, um, so it's really great. It was really great to be supported by um, a professional marketing company through this. Um, and um, a bank of videos were, were created using young influencers and authors. So we very much marketed through the channels that young people use with the things that we'd identified that they were interested in by their peers. So it was really positive. Um, creative Concern ran the TikTok campaign and the video content of all the um, all the individual small snippets of videos were sent to each authority to push through our own marketing channels um, because we we couldn't really set up our individual TikTok platforms when we we just didn't have the foundations there or the knowledge to be able to support if we'd set something up how do we then manage it so that was very much led um, the TikTok campaign was very much led by creative concern um, at this part of the project I think um, we all got the content and then rolled with it. We've got the product, we were ready to launch. The, um, the TikTok campaign was being launched, but actually I think we all went a bit in silo and the project would have benefited from a regroup at this stage for us all just to touch base on, we've done the wonderful journey together of agreeing what, what marketing campaign we wanted to go down, how, and the product, and now suddenly we'd, almost gone a bit in silo to push it out. And I think we could have probably benefited from a delivery brief to really bring it together end to end. So we had a really solid understanding of how TikTok was going to be used and then get maybe get a bit more guidance about how to better use our own social media channels that although young people aren't really heavily on, we're trying to still reach them through these. And is there a best way to do it? Um, and even guidance and wording. So that was just a, a something that sometimes you look back on reflection and think, oh, that would have been great. Um, but we all, it was, the content was great. Um, another interesting challenge was that obviously we had this great content, it looked very different and fresh, but actually branding, we, we as we kind of journeyed through, we realised that it was very hard to suddenly start stamping a way of, you know, getting all our logos onto this video content. And um, and also with the influencers, they are a brand in themselves and the and the um, authors. So actually the, the content was sent out with just promoting libraries and these, this, the reads and the, um, the comics and the fancy books and things like that without um, a specific ident identity for each authority. So that was an interesting gap that we discovered as we channeled through and, and made decisions about what we wanted to create as part of this campaign. So um, maybe that's something that if we did explore kind of using different platforms in the future and different ways to promote, that's branding is obviously so key, but it was a wonderful message about libraries and, and reaching young the young audience. Um, so um, then there were a couple of other minor things that came through, such as um, some of the stock items that the videos were promoting, we didn't have always in stock. Um, and the way the videos were filmed on mobile phone, we use a program to push out our uh, video content through our social media channels to manage all the channels. And actually it didn't take um, these videos. So we had to work around it. Um, I know there was a lot of conversations with our marketing lead and Edward about how you know, we resolved these challenges as we went through. Um, and we resorted, we did use our own mobile phones, which we wouldn't necessarily do. And maybe there's a way to uh, kind of support that through our uh, programs in the future having been through this kind of initial challenge we just were very reactive through this I, I feel um, which is also a good test of resilience and ability to adapt to new things that come out of projects um, and then I think another reflection looking back is that we had a very online digital presence, which was what it was about. But could we have found some way to do some sort of physical marketing campaign to complement it? And especially because the content that went out was great. And through our channels, we had a real, the views were amazing. It was far beyond what we got. And actually 
added value, we could have maybe brought the two a little bit together to make the identity come to our libraries. Um, but that wasn't in the original scope, but that's something that maybe is always good to marry up the online offer and a physical marketing offer. Um, so um, I think we all learned a lot from this project. And I think some of the general project reflections and really very much from a Nottingham City Library's perspective, because we each went through um, a journey together, but each authority I think would learn different things from this and discovered new things by looking back and reflecting back on what they currently do. So from our um, perspective, we, from the start of having very focused discussions about young people and looking at our offers and then looking at how we presented this on our website, there wasn't a landing page for young people to go. It was very much about our services. We had young, young family, we had families and children very much highlighted as a, as a group on our website. And actually young people individually in themselves, they might be part of other identities, but in themselves, they weren't represented as an identity. So we created a teens and young adult page and um, we've continued to develop that. So I feel that we very much brought a, a vis better visibility to our website to say, this is what we provide to you guys and didn't almost make them search for it. So that was a real positive. Um, it was great feeling like we've touched in on new um, platforms, marketing platforms, and gone in that we've explored TikTok. Um, as an individual library authority, I'm not sure that we have the resources and the funds to keep up with the volume of content that that platform would require. But um, and, and in order to, in, to have as well as a successful marketing presence, not just about pushing necessarily kind of the name out and, and uh, products out there, it's actually about what it actually the success of it to invest the time and, and funds to creating con marketing content. Um, but I think what it did do was show us that maybe we can't sustain a permanent presence, but there are creative ways that we can tap into other marketing um, avenues and platforms to dip in and dip out of. And that gives us really um, interesting thoughts for future campaigns that are very focused on young people is, can we find more avenues to tap into TikTok and other platforms that we jump in and out of and we don't have to have them um, try to sustain a permanent presence in a platform that very much is geared around something we couldn't really keep up with. Um, and then I think um, as well, it was hard to identify with the clicks and views and how this translated to physical visits in the libraries, um, which becomes a measurable performance. Um, but I think that's the same with any marketing campaign. It's very much, unless you see a big rush through the door, which would be wonderful in line with a new launch of a, a marketing campaign. It's very much sometimes an organic, slower growth um, and one that's not seen very, you know, or instantly in any way. But what I feel was really good is, and I did feel we uh, achieved was through our own putting these uh, the video contents through our own social media platforms and with the success and visibility on TikTok, I think it did create that awareness. Um, albeit that temporary moment in time, I think that really puts thoughts into young people's minds that we are here, we do provide content and material that they're interested in and come to libraries. So I think that was, um, um, a, a success that's not hard, easy to measure, but I think I think that did reach people. And and as I said, the views of the content through our platforms were higher than we've ever had. So it just shows you change up the content of marketing, and and it really can be wowsome out there. So if that is a word, um, so I think overall the project created a wonderful collaborative space, um, working with other authorities to discuss challenges. And I think that really helped us all look at what we were doing. And actually through the discussions, it then takes you on the path of taking steps to overcome these challenges. Sometimes we, you know, it's easy to think, oh, we know they are hard to reach audience or any audience that's hard to reach. We, we, we in the back of our minds, we know it, but actually taking the steps to overcome that was, was a real positive in this, project and as part of this project and I think it really gave us avenues and a greater wider vision to explore new ways of marketing 
And I felt really we were very much led through the guidance and the expertise of Creative Concern um, and the input and funding through um, Libraries Connected and or the managing the projects Library Connected and the Arts Council to really try and market our libraries and try new unknowns and realise that actually investing in marketing is, is, is really valuable. It will result in greater awareness of libraries overall. So I think that about sums up my <laughs> spiel on the, on the, this project. It was, it was really fun and lots of interesting conversations and a, a great journey, basically. Um, thank you very much, Jill. Um, we have a question for Jill, which, uh, which um, will hopefully be answered uh, later if we have um, time. Uh, very quickly, I'm going to uh, move on to our final um, speaker, which is um, James Powell, uh, communi uh, Communications Manager for um, Suffolk Libraries. Um, James is going to um, speak uh, about uh, Suffolk Libraries' uh, 10th birthday uh, celebrations uh, and also how those fed into um, uh, further um, media campaigns and, and awareness. Um, I'm just going to uh, share um, my screen as I did earlier. Um, so uh, here we go. And hello, everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm a good start. Um, well, thank you for that. Um, unfortunately, I have got quite a, a, a few slides, but you'll be relieved to hear that they are um, they're mostly sort of uh, um, images I just want to use to illustrate our story, really. So, um, so yes, yeah, this is all about our tenth birthday. We we started call, started off by calling it referring to our as our anniversary. Then we decided we were going to have a a big county wide birthday party, which why we kind of changed to referring to it as our um, our um, our birthday celebrations. Um, and um, before I sort of started talking about the story, how we sort of planned this and some of the publicity we got, um, I was just going to tell you a bit, a bit more about Suffolk Libraries and um, just a bit of background. Actually. Um, so, you know, for, for those, I'm sure everyone, most people here know this, but so we're a little bit different because we're independent and charitable. So we were launched as a, as a charity um, back in 2012, hence the 10 year anniversary. Um, we've, um, you know, we've kept all the libraries open. We've saved 25 million pounds. We've worked out um, um, by, by, through the um, you know, annual savings we make based on what the, the library service cost back in, in 2012. Um, in, that, in that time, we've opened 11 new libraries, um, two of which um, coincided with our um, birthday celebrations, which was obviously very uh, very helpful for the publicity. Um, and we've also in, increased and improved in opening hours in several libraries. By by um, by that, we mean that you know we've we've been able to sort of juggle some opening hours around, just make make those a little bit longer in some places and improve just means that we've encouraged library managers to kind of be proactive in kind of um uh, coming out surveys locally so um you know we've changed some opening hours to sort of meet local needs um we're a national portfolio organization so we've got um uh, accreditation and funding from the arts council we're hoping to sort of hear um um, about the next uh, next few years from them very soon. Uh, I think we're one of six library services to have that um, accreditation. So that's um, just something a bit different. Um, and um, and we've also got. We always say this. Uh, hopefully, it's, it's, people please say on the chat if you if if, um, if you uh, want to say anything to the contrary. We we think we're we're the only library service with its own in house. Um, um, dedicated wellbeing service. So, um, if anyone can correct me on that, but we we, we think we're you know that makes us a little bit different as well. Um, can I have the next slide, please. So just a bit about our, our team, well, we said that uh, uh, this is too long, but just because I wanted to explain really things are a bit different for us because we are, as, as a sort of independent organisation, our comms team, um, you know, it's with, you know, it's, it's myself and my colleagues. So, so we're all in-house, we're all part of the library service and we just, you know, we work solely um, to, to market and promote um, Suffolk libraries. So um, we've had a few changes in the last year. Um, so the marketing team, as it is now, is now part of a wider in audience, in audience engagement team um, that also so, you know, we were saying part of the same team as the um, our arts programme. So we work very closely kind of across across um, that, that service. It's all about, you know, engaging with people. So it kind of, you know, it's a good, it's a good fit, really. So it's all about how we kind of reach out to people. Um, my, my previous title was communications and marketing manager. Um, and we had some other sort of marketing assistant, marketing people in the team. Um, we had a new marketing manager join us um, over the last few months. Um, who's previously one of our board members and um and she's kind of um sort of it, it's it's worked very well because we've, we've kind of rebalanced things so she's focusing purely on marketing on, on focusing purely on external um communications and uh, and pr and internal communications as well and we also have our own in-house designer um it's relevant for some of what i'm going to talk about and we've got a digital marketing assistant that does all the um 
does the social media and the and the web editing for us. So that's a bit a bit about a bit about us really. Um, so some of the benefits just I find I'm not going to talk just about stuff at libraries on often, I'll reassure you, but it's just about how it kind of benefits us as a team really and how we in our approach to marketing and publicity. So obviously, you know, we, we are you know, we work very closely with our library colleagues. We've got a lot of freedom to, to create and co-produce marketing materials. Um, we can move very swiftly to react to, to, to news inquiries. So that helps, I think, in terms of getting publicity. We've got very close relationships with our managers and frontline staff. Um, and as I said, we, we focus purely on the library service. So I mean, I'm interested in other people's, people's views, but you know, we, we I know I've, I've worked in a county council um, comms team before in Tuffock. So I know, you know, that, that, that Things are a lot. We've got a lot more freedom than we would have if we were part of the county council because we we don't, don't have to kind of go through the um you know the bureaucracy as I think someone said at the start. You know we don't have to run things past councillors and we can we can kind of get things out a bit quicker and we can be just a little bit 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 more proactive. I think. So on to the next one. So just for your drawback. So yeah. So so obviously as as we are sort of a, a, a charity and as I've mentioned the savings we've made. You know we, we have got limited resources. We don't have a huge uh, marketing budget. Although we during COVID there was a, there was a bit more we could spend because we weren't doing certain other things. But you know we we um we make the most of um you know the good relationships we've got with a lot of other organisations as well. And then specific campaigns and projects obviously will have marketing budgets attached to them as well. Um, some of the drawback as well because we because we are. Um, part of the library service we obviously we, we get more involved in things like you know being part of the management team and other meetings and stuff so we have a lot of planning meetings so you know we are well you know it's a good thing in a way it's not it's we're all we're all part of a big team so you know it does mean that sometimes there's a need to kind of get involved and muck in with other with other projects but um it's a bit more about us and um this is not really a drawback but obviously although i said we're independent we, we you know we have less bureaucracy we don't we don't have to run press releases past councillors um as i did in the old days but we still have to, obviously, to keep them happy we still get about 90 percent of our funding from suffolk county council so it's not necessarily a drawback we obviously need to kind of engage with them um, um and keep keep them happy and um obviously raise their awareness of what the library service um provides for the people of suffolk um next slide so so our 10-year campaign um Obviously, we've been we've been um, thinking about this for some time, knowing that you know that the first of August 2022 was a big date for us. Um, so it's a chance to celebrate. Um, it's obviously a one-off opportunity for some wider publicity. Um, it's a chance to show our impact and also our um, fundraising ask as, a, as an independent charity. You know, we do we do need to do our own fundraising. It's a chance to influence people. So like all the stakeholders, uh, many of which I've, I've, I've mentioned. So you know, we've got um, we wanted to. We want to get the, sort of certain messages out to to councillors to other organisations. Obviously, library users is a very, very important one. Um, it's a chance to celebrate staff as well. You know, celebrate their achievements as well as kind of engage them on the campaign. Um, and one of the things we've done, uh, I think, the whole theme of today is all about shouting about libraries and celebrating what we all do. And um, one of the one of the challenges we still have, you know, we've had lots of you know very good publicity recently, but it's still it's still a challenge to get people to realise. That the whole, you know, the, the wider benefits of the library services and um, you know, the, the the impact we have on people's lives from a from a day to day on a day to day basis, really. So, so this is a great chance to perhaps reach out to people, and gather some more case studies and examples from people, and then also a good uh, good opportunity to share some case studies. So, um, as I said, you know, we really wanted to engage with staff with this. So, um, we wanted to enthusiasm about um, about the um, the campaign, um, engage them with it going forward, but also very aware that. Um, this coincided with the summer reading challenge, which, as you'll all know, is, is a very busy, very, very busy time of year. So we weren't really expecting people or, you know, asking people to to, to organise lots of extra events um, and activities on top of everything else that they already have to do. But we kind of provided party packs, resources, posters, that kind of thing. So there was physical materials that they could use um, in the library. We came up with, um, I've used the... Um, template for the um, a PowerPoint presentation for this. As you'll see at the bottom, it's got our uh, 10 years of extraordinary every day. So it, the word extraordinary is something we came up with to kind of um, talk about, you know, the, the impact we have on people's lives and, and the, the contribution of our, of our staff, really. So, um, you know, we came up with that. that that's our 10 year logo, the branding that we've been using. I won't, I won't, we won't continue to use it forever, but I thought it was um, obviously appropriate for this presentation. Um, also, looking back, we had 10 years of statistics. So we've got a lot of big numbers we can share about the you numbers know, books borrowed and some of the other sort of, um, well, hopefully impressive um, numbers that we can we could share. Um, it's a good chance to re reach out for message, messages of support from people. I'll come on to that in a bit, bit later. We had, had the idea of share your story. So we um, had a, media, um, a social media campaign asking people to share their um, share their stories with us. So, so 
you know, to talk about, uh, to provide us comments, feedback, and potentially um, even more people we could then um, speak to for, for, for interviews and case studies. Um, part of the early process, particularly for me, was to warm up the local media. So I was talking to, to people from BBC Radio Suffolk in the local newspapers at kind of quite an early stage, um, just to kind of let um, to get, get people interested before we before we really kind of got got cracking on the publicity. One of the things we did, as, again, as I've said, is um, provide um, packs for uh, the county councillors, so, so they were kind of engaged. They were all sent a, um, a little um, "I'm extraordinary" badge. I've got one here. I'm, I'm, I've got a better picture of it on the next slide, I think. But you know, we wanted to, we wanted to let them know about our ten years of um, running the library service um, on their behalf, um, and kind of what we've what we've hopefully achieved for um, for um, taxpayers, essentially. Next slide, please. So that's just a couple of like um, images I wanted to share with you. Um, so I'm just closing something down so I can see that properly myself. So we yeah, provided these, like, we put together these like, little, little, I'm, I'm extraordinarily bad. You sent them out to some of our partners and um, and staff to wear during the um, the campaign. And I'm sure, and people still wear them better now because I saw someone wearing one in the library earlier. <laughs> uh, we came up with these um, graphics to sort of, um, you know, to sort of celebrate happy birthday and 10 years of extraordinary every day. So that's just a few, some of the, so that's some of the materials that our graphic designer put together. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, so this is just an example of some of the materials that we've provided. Um, you know, can't sort of see them that, that that closely there, but that was one of the birthday parties that was held in Barry St Edmunds Library and had some publicity. So just as an example, seeing some of those marketing materials on the ground, really. Uh, next slide. Um, so I've mentioned share your story. Um, so you know we share this on social media. We've, we've, we've one of the benefits of having an in-house designer. We can kind of ask her to put these little, a nice little um, uh, social media graphics together for us, which we find sort of you know provide impact on social media. Because we're always trying to explain to people it's best not to have like big lengthy posters or lots of text on your posts. So we just try and short share things like this quite quite a lot. We find it has you know it impacts and it kind of and it's, it's it's also great for, for individual libraries to be able to share this stuff as well. So we had a competition so people could win an iPad and we had quite a good um, turnout for them. We've got like 30 or 40 or 50 really good, um, really positive um, comments from people and, you know, potential case studies, some of which I'll share in a minute. Uh, next slide, please. So here's a couple of examples. So we put together that, I mean, we the idea was because the, the, the whole, fo whole focus on the um, uh, campaign was obviously around the 1st of August which was our birthday but obviously then you know it's a great opportunity to to sort of celebrate this during the month and have a month of celebration because you know there's it's obviously a great opportunity for us that we won't we won't get again for some time so these are things these are genuine comments that people have shared and obviously they're just you know brilliant you couldn't I often joke you can't if we couldn't make up better comments about the library service that you know if we've tried than some of the things that people actually genuinely say so you know it's a really lovely lovely um um, sort of heartwarming comments we get from people and we've, been, we've obviously been sharing these throughout the month on social media. Um, so this is like, I appreciate this is a bit busy to kind of in, uh, digest just in one in one sitting, but it's, um, it's this is a kind of an information graphic we came up with. We also use this for um, um, an advert in the local newspapers. It kind of captures all, lots of big numbers, things that were, the, uh, some of some of the stuff I've talked about, like, you know, opening new libraries, um, saving money, and how we impact on wellbeing. Um, kind of currently working on some um, ways of lifting this stuff out with some context and some text for our website so it's something we could then use to sort of um, you know to the, so the customers can land on it and it will help with our fundraising ask us to show what our what our impact has been over 10 years and going forward thank you so the other thing the thing about reaching out we wanted to kind of have some lovely messages to share to share with people throughout the month the, the aim to be to have one for every single day of the month I think we manage it um, so you know we've, we've through our various contacts and um, people we work with, we you know we 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 reach out to all sorts of people. So we had local authors, and Nikki French, you know, they're place just uh, just um, across the, across the border in um, I think I think they're based in Suffolk. Um, obviously, we've got you know there was um, ministers, MPs who who are happy to kind of um, share messages with us. Mark Ashton, the CEO of Ipswich Town Football Club. Um, we haven't got a particularly strong you know relationship with Ipswich Town Football Club at the moment. You know we we talk to them a while. I'm I'm, I'm a fan myself, <laughs> but but it's but it was great to be able to you know they're. I don't want to bore you with talking about football, for a bit, but it's you know they're 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 on the up at the moment, and hopefully um, there's a lot of interest in them. So it's great to just sort of reach out to these organisations who you wouldn't necessarily uh, think would associate themselves with the library service, just to say something really positive. These are all screen grabs, by the way, from YouTube videos. So these are these are we didn't just share these, but they, these are like um. So we had like thirty or so um, 
video clips, some some of which are only a few seconds from people wishing us happy birthday and talking about our impact in the community. So this is just a few examples, but they're all, they're all on, a, on, a, on a dedicated playlist on our YouTube channel. But just, a, you know, there's something else we want to just share. And it's, you know, basically, they're all, they're, they're, it's a um, bunch of people wishing us happy birthday. So uh, social media, I want to show this because uh, I think um, the other speakers have been talking about measurables and how we can sort of measure the success of some of the marketing. It's quite difficult to measure the success of our um, 10 year birthday in, in sort of actual figures. I've had a lot of plenty of publicity. And I'll sort of um, share a few exa more examples in a minute. Um, we, we didn't have a specific 10 year page on the website because it didn't really sort of work for that because it's more of a wider campaign. So, but this is one example I thought was quite, was quite good to share. So. Uh, we, um, this is our new marketing manager, Georgie's her idea um, to, to have a social media thunderclap. So we reached out to lots of people locally and, and nationally. I believe stuff, um, Libraries Connected got involved in this. Thank you very much. So we, we wanted to have a thunderclap where everyone you know, wished us happy birthday or said something nice about us on the 1st of August. So what this shows is from Twitter analytics. So, um, you know, so just talking about the, the general impressions at the top, but every, every one of those blue bars is basically a day's worth of, of Twitter activity. And you can see on the 1st of August, that big blue bar there. So that was that was the thunderclap. That was the impact of everyone talking about us. Lots of people sharing things and liking things and commenting. So just to show, and it, obviously you can see it kind of stayed stayed reasonably high sort of in, in the um, subsequent days as well. But it just shows the kind of, you know, the impact of, of doing something like that. Thank you. So PR opportunities. So, um, We've been quite, um, I mean, we've obviously worked hard on the on the 10 year campaign, did a lot of planning beforehand, uh, put lots of, lots of materials together, reached out to lots of people, had lots of meetings. Um, so we're quite lucky in, in, in some ways, in some of the way, in the, in the way some of it worked out. So we launched, we were able to open a brand new library on the 1st of August, which is obviously great for, you know, to align that as a new story, you know, that 10, 10 year anniversary, sorry, birthday itself is, is, is big enough news for Suffolk, but the fact we're opening a, a brand new library, and this isn't like the other libraries we've opened. Um, I should say, by the way, the, the, all the libraries we open, they're not because we've got enough funding to just randomly open all these extra new libraries they are their libraries that are moving mostly because the county council is selling off another site or their kind of hub approaches where you know the library is moving into a kind of community hub so it's just it's, you know it's it's, a, it's us working in partnership with lots of other organizations to kind of make these things happen but the um so a brand, the brand new library opened in Morton Hall which is just on the outskirts of Bury St Edmunds which is a, one of the larger towns in Suffolk um it's um you know so it's a growing community so 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 it's uh, it's good to have, be able to have a library there it's a very small library and it's it's um um but it's uh, perfectly formed and it's a uh, you know very very um yeah it's just brilliant to be able to offer something new to to the community so it's a case of really you know the, the other libraries that we've had uh, have been libraries moving to new premises this is a brand new one so it's an extra library an additional library for people of Suffolk so that's been you know that, that's great and we've been building up to this for several months so it's been delayed for various reasons um, which means that basically we were able to open on the 1st of August so and, and at the same time we had some more developer plan, um, planning development money um, for a new pop-up library so we've got several pop-up libraries and it just just so happened we were able to then launch that on the 2nd of august so we had two new libraries opening in the same week which is obviously great for pr value we've got all this new stuff happening um i got a really good relationship with bbc radio suffolk so they did a week of features i was going to sort of try and share some but i think it'd be too difficult and take up too much time in this uh, in this session but they did say i could share them if anyone's interested in but they they kind of really get us you know in terms of they did five days of features about everything we do which featured the cost of living well-being um just talking to to older people to children um and it was really great you know that they we didn't have to sort of try and force them in a particular direction or just to, they, they just you know they just kind of get get what we offer the community and they were really positive about you know really putting some um, weight behind it we also had a bbc um suffolk takeover um where we um basically took over a show for an evening and three of us went on on the radio and chose some music so we got asked staff to choose some songs if they felt summed up the library service um someone suggested the theme from ghostbusters because there's a library scene at the start and i kind of laughed about that didn't actually have it on our top five list and i made the mistake of mentioning it to the presenter so he did play it in the show after all just the only story so um so that was great you know we had a whole, whole you know plenty of publicity from bbc suffolk in the local papers as well um features in silic magazine things like that i know ian and sis is on the call it's good to, to see him in real life early and i you know I, i'm in contact with him regularly for um adding things to um to um, uh, his, his newsletter, which often often sift through to see if he's picked up on any of our news stories. So he's, you know, it's great to people, you know, it, it, people have been very supportive and helpful um, to us in this. Next slide. 
Um, sorry, that was just an example of the um, the, 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 the the takeover show, really. Just to, you know, it was we had our own uh, slot. So this is a again, it's another screen grab from a YouTube video. So we've got some, someone who's been on secondment for a while. It's kind of um, uh, um, legacy thing from covid really and, and all the all the online stuff we have to do so he's basically been working with our team as a, as a video producer which is great because he's kind of got a really professional setup and uh, we're able to send him out across the county um interviewing people and creating these um oh, like some really like really lovely video clips i mean i should could show it to you but it's you know i'm particularly pleased with this one so this was like one of our um, me myself and baby stay and play sessions at Leiston library in east suffolk um and this came about because the library manager shared a postcard that, that she was um sent by one of the people in this one of the uh, parents in this picture saying how much she loved the library and she found this session was great because she, she'd made a best friend through it and you know their their, their children are best friends it's a really lovely heartwarming story so i followed it up by contacting them and asking if they'd be interviewed so we went along to the library and did a did a you know lovely video with them it's um you know it's, again it's on our youtube channel but one I'm, I'm particularly pleased with but this is another example of the stuff we then shared during the month of august to kind of um show our impact and basically you know create lots of uh, create a bit of a buzz Thank you. How am I doing for time? Am I talking too long? <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, we, not that we, many left. We, um, if, if people don't mind, sort of, um, uh, uh, if people don't mind hanging around, sort of, until about five or ten past, then, um, then we should still have time for a couple of, a uh, couple of questions. I think so. Um, yeah, uh, sorry, it's um. I always never think it's going to take that because there's, there's not a lot of um sort of tech to with it, but there's uh, there's only a few left. So so again, this is just an example of some of the publicity we had. You know, that's the new Morton Hall Library. For some of my colleagues, um, that's um yeah the new library manager. We had the the mayor of Bury St Edmunds visited and got his first library card. So that was a uh, you know another like, little, little coup. And the the thing the the picture at the bottom that's our pop up library. So that's the first session. You can see that was very popular, um for a, for a, a a launch. Um, that's Tom, who's basically our one of us one of the stars of our staff he just basically turns up to things with an acoustic guitar and sings so he's, he's brilliant <laughs> next slide please not many left um again this is just another example of some of the publicity we had we've had quite a few features um, um and they're still ongoing there's one this one in the um local magazine this month so you know we've had lots of you know interest basically in in, in sharing our story and the kind of impact made uh, next slide so some of the outcomes, greater awareness amongst all our stakeholders. So obviously, as we've saying, the key ones are the county council, other other partners we work with, uh, customers, um, obviously, and um, and our staff. So you know, it's getting people to. Um, one of the key things for us is that we're also approaching a time where you know, as as an independent uh, library service, we're kind of um, you know, we'll we're, we're the the contract will be up for renewal in the next couple of years. So we are we are you know doing our utmost to kind of influence people and kind of about our impact and um and getting staff to engage in those key messages that elevator pitch really it all comes down to the elevator pitch and getting people to kind of be able to talk about what we do and i, I think a lot of the problems it's not a problem but one of the issues we have and i'm sure other people around the table will, will appreciate this is that people just don't appreciate how great libraries are and what the impact how important the impact is and they just think it's day to day let's go to work do a brilliant job and they're kind of it's almost you have to remind them how important that you know it, that they are to communities and partly it's all around that it's just having getting some you know to be able to explain that to someone who might visit the library you know just to kind of come up with these examples and case studies so we have plenty of publicity um hopefully staff feel, felt appreciated because we were using the uh, your extraordinary um strap line um again it's all about the impact you know getting that kind of across to people as well it's not just about keeping libraries open and uh, lending books is that everything else we do for communities really um so we've got the share your story um idea we've got you know more feedback more case studies for future pr as well and then off the back of it again quite sort of fortuitous really because at the start of on the first of august i don't think anyone was really thinking um in any great detail about a kind of winter cost of living crisis or at least having a sort of library campaign around it so because we um it's partly because um so can you go on the next slide it might, might probably want to what i'm talking about so yeah so so it's so partly because of um the um the fact that bbc the bbc suffolk you know we've got really good relationship there and they've been talking nationally to other colleagues in the bbc about our what we do to help with the cost of living so as on the back of that we've already had some like greater awareness and i started getting calls from um national bbc teams about um what we were doing around 
um, war rooms, that kind of thing. We had this um, local um, front page news story about about war, room, war rooms as well, because I think um, another library service was talking about it. And then off the back of that, I think you know we had we had quite a bit of interest from from various sort of media outlets, and also libraries connected. Obviously, you, you share these opportunities from time to time, and we've we you know, we've always we've always strived to act to, to um, sort of react quite swiftly to that. So we've. Um, um, you know, we were able to, to respond and say, yeah, we're up for things like, for example, like Bruce, our um, chief exec was on, was interviewed live on BBC News. Um, he, this is a screen grab of his um, live interview with um, Susanna Reid and Martin Lewis. And then Good Morning Britain um, came to one of our libraries, which was a fun day because we had to meet them at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but um, so it, we were still awake by that time. Um, so and they, the, the, the journalist who came out is interested in coming back, following up some stories. And I think BBC News are coming back as soon as next week. So it's kind of this, the end of the story, really. But um, I think it's at the final slide, Edward. I can't sorry, I've got it in front of me. I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think I have any. Yeah, yet. so just to, just to close, really, and, and it's, it's it's really, it's kind of, you know, it's flowed into from one thing into another, really. And I think I think the sort of le the learning from us or the, you know, the things that might be useful to you is that, you know, for us, we are able to act, to, to, to respond fairly swiftly because we are, you know, a, a, a sort of independent charity. But I think for me, it's like making sure that colleagues in the, you know, communications and press teams and marketing teams kind of appreciate the, you know the potential there is that like for the library service to create lots of this this publicity you know the impact we have on people's lives um sometimes it's difficult to get that across isn't it and getting and being able to sort of uh, to respond and um and just be sort of really proactive all the time take up these 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 opportunities when when they come so it's it's kind of been a, it's been a sort of successful summer which has kind of flowed into this this sort of cost of living thing and obviously you know i'm saying it's a, obviously it's a horrendous situation for everyone that we even have to sort of think about it but you know I and mean, we're still getting um publicity inquiries now about the cost of living crisis because that's not going away and we've, we're just about to launch a kind of kindness campaign sort of centered around warm rooms so you know it will continue to be a story um throughout the winter you know un unfortunately obviously but you know it's a good opportunity for to sort of highlight the role of libraries i think probably for this thing says oh sorry if i've talked too long <laughs> No, thank you. Um, thanks very much, James. That was terrific. And, and thanks to um, all our speakers. If, if people don't mind, um, uh, we've still got um, 33 people in the room. So if people don't mind hanging around sort of five minutes longer, I reckon we've got time for probably one one question per um, per speaker. So I'll, I'll give James a bit of a, um, a, a break um, and I'll start with, um, uh, I'll start with a question for, um, uh, for for Jill, if that's okay. Um, uh, so, uh, Jill, um, what would you say are key things to consider when using TikTok? That's quite a tricky. There you go. That's a nice, easy, easy question. Uh, and then looking at the next comment, Somerset, uh, 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 I was impressed to see um, running a TikTok account. So actually, I, I found that quite inspiring reading that. Um, I think from what we learned as part of this um, project was make it relevant to your audience, short, snappy videos, um, know the, so it, TikTok's obviously about younger people and a uh, platform for young people. So make sure you get the key, make sure you get the right message. Um, don't try and spam them, basically, I think. Um, and then check that uh, the branding situation was quite interesting. Uh, there'll be uh, intellectual property considerations, obviously uh, licensing, you know, the, um, sorry, what's it called? Uh, the, um, uh, oh, I've forgotten what it's called now, you know, the, uh, it, it, to promote books, you know, if there's any sort of content being read out, obviously those licensing um, uh, agreements and anything to do with content. So who owns these videos if you're using influencers or depending on who you're using, um, are they going to be charged? Who owns the property of these videos and things like that? So I think that's in a nutshell um, and sustainability, um, but obviously Somerset shows that it can be done. Thank you. Um, one for uh, Sorel and then a final one for um, for James. Um, uh, Sorel, how did you um, find uh, working with your uh, local authority comms team on the One Million Reads um, project? And do you feel like you got the uh, support that, that you needed? And how, how did that process sort of go, go for you? Um, yes, as long, you know, they, they are absolutely brilliant. But it, again, it was the same process as with many people, just really taking the time to explain to them what we wanted to do, being very clear about the timeline, about when, when the various parts of the project 
were happening so that they you know you're not just going to people and offloading a big a big piece of work you're kind of taking it as a structured project but you know it was interesting listening to James I I think we respond incredibly quickly and fast to absolutely everything and that's working with that communications team as well um so so we do have a really good we're very lucky we have a very good relationship with them anyway we also have just started a TikTok um account looking at that kind of teenage adult market so we're we're just dipping our toes in the water and seeing how we go with that I'm afraid I have to go now. It's been really lovely talking to everyone, but I have got a three o'clock meeting. So bye everyone. Thanks, Rel. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, and one final question before we um, wrap it up for uh, James from Jill. Uh, so um, J James, do you think that um, you will, you're gonna run future library uh, birthday or anniversary campaigns at say 15 to 20 years? um or is it or was this a uh was this a one-off um i don't know really i mean it's, it's obviously um we, 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 when we were one year old we got quite a, a bit of publicity because obviously at the time it was a bit of a novelty you know we've every now and then we've done i think we did a five-year one as well we haven't we didn't do such a big campaign i guess 15 it might be it's quite difficult to know where <laughs> we'll be in five years time isn't it so certainly certainly something would be i thought it's always in because I've, I've been with stuff like nearly 10 nearly those full 10 years so i was always on the first of august is always ingrained in my head as something we so uh, yeah well i think we'll have to consider that i mean i think i think it was possibly a one-off i mean 20 years would probably be another opportunity as well but it's it felt like a really you know it's the, it's the learning from it i suppose it's difficult to replicate because 10 years you know again and i and also and also appreciate just bearing in mind what um so was just saying that you know it, me saying that we're independent so that helps us do i mean it doesn't mean anyone else's you know system is you know i'm sure everyone has got really good um, relationships with their comms team as well and that has having worked in a comms team i know that's like i suppose i just wanted to say as an example it helps to 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 be able to respond to things swiftly if you you know if you're asked by people in your comms team you know for about radio opportunities things like that you know the the, the more that you can kind of the more helpful you can be and, and the quick the, the, you know the the swifter you can be that that will help in in terms of publicity and i'd also suggest you probably already do, or, or do this anyway but you know just to have regular regular discussions with them about what's coming up from the library service and what what the sort of pr and marketing opportunities are it's all about you know, it's all about communication and giving people plenty of notice really so that kind of applies to everyone, hopefully. Thanks.